What types of things can you do to not only market your brand or business online, but also allows you to monetize your content? Hey, it's Arit here with Asatino Media, and I wanted to create a video that gives you insights into the top ways of creating profitable content that's going to market you online, but also at the same time, it gives you another revenue stream or even multiple revenue streams. This isn't going to be like a kitchen sink list of everything that's out there, because there is a lot of stuff. It's a special list list that I curated for you based on experience that will allow you to build a community around your area of expertise. And stick around to the end because at the end I'll share with you my best but boring advice that will yield you the best results when it comes to creating profitable content online, regardless of which one of these you end up choosing. So let's get right into it. Number one, you can create a digital download. Now, I recently filmed a video on this in terms of how to sell a digital product online, but just so you know, a digital download is something like creating an ebook, creating a checklist, creating a worksheet or a workbook for your audience. People love this because it's an actionable item. It's, it's something that not only allows them to learn and improve themselves and get better, either in the personal development space or career development space, but it's also a practical tool for them. In today's age where there's just so much information, right, we're inundated with information, this is something that is actually tangible and allows them to take action on. And not only that, it helps them use a tool to do something faster. So for example, we teach a lot about YouTube on this channel, on starting and growing a profitable YouTube channel. And we have a checklist that we created that is a YouTube SEO checklist. It tells people exactly what to do when they're optimizing a video for the search engines. This is so valuable to, you know, we, we've had great feedback from our students with this checklist. We also have a template. So a template is another type of a digital download that, you know, when you give someone this thing, it just, it saves them time. It's a huge time saver. They can just plug in their information and go. So you want to ask yourself, what is something that you can, a, a digital download in your field that you can create that will help someone get a faster result? Number two, you could start a podcast. Podcasting has experienced significant growth over the past few years. You know, if you're good at speaking, if you're good at riffing off of certain topics, or you prefer to speak from a script rather than being on video, then a podcast is a great way to create long form content, to build an audience around your area of expertise, to create conversations around what you teach. There's so many ways you can monetize this. If you build an audience successfully with your podcast, you're building a community, then you can monetize this in the form of selling sponsorships or brand deals. You could sell advertising. I mean, just think of the the top podcasts that you might listen to if you do listen to podcasts. You'll notice they have different ads or different sponsors in each of those podcasts. And at the same time, it might be an exclusive podcast, meaning you might also charge on the front end to get access to that podcast. So they're um, getting a premium subscription experience. So you can monetize on the front end with your podcast, getting access to it for a monthly fee, let's say, and or you can monetize on the back end with sponsorships, advertising, you can sell your products and services as well. And this ties into number three, which is starting a YouTube channel. So it's quite similar, except it's in the format of video, right? And video continues to dominate as a popular format for content creation. And with YouTube being the largest video sharing platform on the internet, it's a great place for you to start a platform or a stage, aka start a channel, where you're creating content around different topics, different areas of expertise, how-tos, that kind of thing you're providing, you're sharing your knowledge and building a community around that thing. And this is one of my favorite ways to create profitable content. As you can see on this channel, we talk about many different things. There's different ways you can monetize your content. It's cool because you're talking about topics that you know and love, but it doesn't feel like you're marketing yourself. But when you really provide good quality content and it helps people, they end up purchasing one of your products or services. They, they end up becoming a customer. The viewer turns into a customer in terms of how these revenue streams work. But just to share a crazy stat with you, there's over 3 billion searches every single month 
on YouTube. It's the second largest search engine after Google. It's a really great way to position yourself as an authority in your field, to build a community and to monetize in different ways. I mean, that's literally been our business and that's what allowed me to quit my job, my nine to five job, honestly. I could talk forever about YouTube, but let's move on. Number four, another way to create profitable content by leveraging the power of SEO in the form of a blog. If you're not someone who likes to create video content, you could also create a blog. You can create content in the form of a blog that ranks well in the search engines, and this leads to organic traffic. You've probably seen different websites having their own blog, and they're actually using this to attract traffic to their website but there's also another way where you can use a site like Substack, or you can even write articles on LinkedIn, for example, because writing articles on these platforms, when the proper SEO is done, then they're able to rank well in Google. And when someone's typing a certain topic, again, that content comes up. And there's many ways, again, to monetize a blog. You can offer a monthly subscription to get access to that blog. You can also monetize on the back end in terms of promoting other people's products and services. This ties into affiliate marketing because if you're, for example, creating a blog post on top three tools that you use to grow your business and you have affiliate links for those things, then you can earn commissions whenever someone clicks on that link and purchases something from you. And by the way, this is something that you can also do with the YouTube channel and the podcast. Number five, live streaming. So platforms like Twitch and Facebook have really gained traction in terms of allowing gamers particularly to monetize their content, but live streams aren't necessarily just for gamers. Again, if you're someone who is creating a live stream, you can create a whole show that is a live show and you're creating a live stream around certain topics, around your area of expertise. Maybe you have an interview show where you invite guests and you go live together and you ask them a series of questions. There's so many different creative ideas that you could do with a live stream. The benefit to a live stream is that it's live and people are able to donate to you right then and there. So if people are really digging your content or you've answered their question, you'll see donations come through from your viewers. And this is something we've experienced as well with going live on our YouTube channel. We actually use a software called StreamYard to live stream. And I'll link to that in the description below if you're interested in checking it out, but it's a multi-streaming platform. So you can go live on different platforms on YouTube. We typically go live on YouTube and Facebook, but you can also go live on Instagram and on LinkedIn. And then StreamYard allows you to create a very cool visual show and they make it easy for you to do this. And you're able to see all of the comments from all of the platforms that you're live streaming to in one place. So it makes it really easy and fun to create a live stream show on StreamYard. Live streams can also lead to some really cool opportunities. You can create some really cool collaborations and partnerships. So let's say, for example, you're inviting a guest on the show and they're selling a particular product or service because they're coming on your show and you know, you're promoting them to your audience. You can arrange with that guest a affiliate commission. You know, you can create a, a collaboration or a partnership with them where they will give you a small cut from whatever course sales or product sales or service sales that they have sold from your live stream. And this is pretty cool because if you don't sell something yourself, you don't have a particular product or service to sell yourself, you're basically leveraging off of other people in this way. What your value is that you bring to the table is you're providing a platform for them to speak on. And that's something that a lot of people want nowadays. Number six, creating an online course. So creating an online course is a great way to package your knowledge, especially if you've already been working with clients, for example, one-on-one, -on -one. you're answering the same questions over and over again, and or you want to do less of the one-on-one -on -one work and just sell more of this online course, which will help leverage your time and still provide a good revenue stream. So we talk a lot about creating online courses on this channel. The way this monetizes is not just on the front end, meaning the price they pay to get access to your course, but it's also quite lucrative because you can build other ways to monetize within the course. Let's say you, you price your course at 
$67 on the front end. You can also create different milestones within your course to upsell your students if they need some extra help. For example, we have a course called The Profitable Channel and it teaches people how to leverage their expertise on YouTube to create a channel that sells more of their products and services and to build a community. And within that course, it's a, a DIY, you know, self-paced course, video course that people can take on their own time. But if they need some extra help during certain parts of that course, for example, the content strategy piece, let's say, if they want to get on a one-on-one -on -one call with us to really hash out what that content strategy looks like for them, then we are upselling them. They're being led to a checkout page for a one-hour call with us. There's different ways you can monetize this. You can also, for example, if you have a list of recommended resources or tools that you use, you can create a document with links to all of those resources and earn affiliate commissions on the back end. And you can get really strategic with an online course. Again, I'll link to some helpful videos if this is something that's resonating with you in the description below. Number seven, you can create a membership or a subscription-based offer. Essentially what you're doing is you're offering a premium access to a set of exclusive content, whatever that looks like, right? It could be blog posts, articles, it could be videos, it could be downloads, it could be a live class, anything, right? Maybe it includes access to ad-free content or behind the scenes, stuff that you don't normally post on social media for everyone to see. This has the benefit of being a monthly recurring revenue product, right? So they, it's a subscription model, so they pay a monthly fee, and it's up to you to continue releasing exclusive content every month that keeps the value of that subscription ongoing. And obviously the benefit is that recurring revenue, but the downside is if, if you're someone who's not interested in creating high value exclusive content every month and upkeeping that and maintaining that, then this probably isn't for you because that will very quickly fizzle out. You don't want people to purchase a subscription with you and then not get the value that they came for, or you know they just, end up quitting or stopping their subscription like two months, three months later down the road because that type of experience could actually hurt future purchases with you. However, if it's in your goal to really create an exclusive community and to curate content for that community specifically, then this is something that you might wanna look into. Number eight, affiliate marketing. We've kind of touched upon this in some of the previous things, but just to reiterate, you don't need to have your own product or service to sell. The benefit of doing affiliate marketing is that you are able to promote other people's products and services and earn a commission on the back end. And you might be asking, well, how do I find these products and services that I can earn commissions on? The first place to look at is to ask yourself, what are products or companies or brands that you recommend? And then you would go and look for affiliate programs or partner programs with each of those companies. And I would say most of the time people do, if they're a, a, a big established company, they do have an affiliate program that you can sign up for. And sometimes it's an application process. Sometimes they just allow anyone to become an affiliate. They give you access to your own dashboard where they give you your own link that you can use to promote. And then you can also track the data. So how many people clicked on the link, how many sales came through that link. And it's typically a, a monetary commission. They give you benefits in other ways. Like we talk a lot about a particular tool called Airtable. It's a tool that we use to manage products. And with their affiliate program, they just provide credits that you can use towards your own subscription on Airtable. It's not a monetary thing. On the flip side, if this is a product that can be found on Amazon, for example, you can sign up to become an Amazon associate, which is like being an Amazon affiliate. And you have, again, access to your own dashboard where you can promote any product on Amazon and you can link to these things from your blog posts, your social media posts, your video content, your podcasts, whatever type of content, profitable piece of content that you like to create. The ninth way to create profitable content is to repurpose the content that you already have. This just gives you more juice, more power to content that you've already spent time creating. So to give you one example, we take the videos that we create on our YouTube channel, not all of them, but some of them, because we curate which ones we choose, 
We take certain videos and then create a blog post from that video, a post that we create on Substack, and we send that post out to our email list. And the benefit of this is that it nurtures our email list with more valuable content, keeping top of mind, but at the same time, it's also attracting new people to our content from Substack. And we're able to grow our email list to be even bigger from doing this content repurposing method. If you already have a blog and you're thinking of starting a podcast, you could take the blog posts that you already have and turn them into podcasts or videos, right? There's so many different ways that you can do this, but essentially the benefit of this is you're maximizing your reach and engagement because you're allowing other people to find you through different methods, because not everyone watches videos, right? Not everyone listens to podcasts, not everyone is on uh, reads blogs. So by covering these different mediums, you're expanding your reach and increasing your profitability. And the 10th way to create profitable content is personal branding. So this is kind of the foundation that sits underneath all of the other ways that we talked about. Podcasting, YouTube channel, blog posts, membership, subscriptions, all this kind of stuff. Building a strong personal brand leads to increased visibility and opportunities for monetization in many different ways. I'm not just talking about selling more of your products and services, but giving you access to bigger platforms, for example, speaking opportunities where you have access to other people's audiences or to creating sponsorship partnerships or opportunities. If there's one thing that you're gonna focus on or take out from this video about the 10 ways to create profitable content, it's really just focus on creating a strong personal brand. Being consistent in your messaging being consistent in your energy, in the vibe, whenever someone interacts with your content, regardless of what platform it's on, it has a certain personality to it. Like actually part of creating a brand is asking yourself, if, if my company or business was, was a person, what would that person look like? What would that person speak like? What would it feel like to hang out with that person? How would people describe that person? Right? So by seeing your brand or company as a, as a personality, as an energy, as a vibe, and keeping that consistent across multiple platforms, what you're doing is you're creating an experience, a feeling for people who are digesting your content. That is really something unique that nobody can take away from you. Everyone can create a video on the 10 ways to create profitable content. Everyone can create a video on how to start and grow a profitable YouTube channel, but it's the particular vibe and energy and branding and messaging and the way that you present your topic or your area of expertise that creates a connection with people that keeps them coming back for more. So I just wanna reiterate, you don't have to do all of these things because I mean, you shouldn't. You'd be spreading yourself way too thin if you did all of that, podcasting, YouTube, blog, etc. And there's a lot of overlap here as well. So how do you know which one to choose? Well, I already mentioned personal branding, really important to focus on, but what about the other different mediums that we talked about? Here's my best but boring advice to you in terms of what to choose. Choose the medium that you can see yourself doing consistently over and over again. So this is why I called it boring, right? Because nobody wants to hear that. It's, it's, it's boring to do the same thing over and over again, but this is really an underestimated superpower to be able to do a podcast episode or a video or for your channel or a blog post week after week after week. And this is in fact why many people fail with any particular one of these things is because they they start something, they see it isn't really working for them in the first two, three, four months, let's say, even six months, it could take a good amount of time to have something grow, right? But if you're able to stay consistent with it, this will yield you the best results. So really think about this. Think about, can you see yourself writing a blog post every week, releasing a video every week, what is that medium that you feel like you do connect with and you can see yourself doing it over and over again? I would advise you to go all in with that thing. Do whatever you can to learn about how to start and create a successful podcast, channel, whatever that medium might look like, right? I'll link to some helpful resources for you to dive deeper into some of these ways that we talked about in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button to let YouTube know it's good content. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.